everybody, Mike here again. Uh, it's been a while since my last video. Uh, I'm working with Andrew again behind the camera. Yo. Uh, he recently did a video, I'll put a link in the description, uh, where he showed off his uh, PRS 5 string bass with the rig I'm about to play through. Uh, this is what, an Aguilar ATG 500? Yeah. Uh, and two hard keys, a 410 and a 115. Yeah, the AK series. Nice. So I've made a few changes to this bass uh, since the last time I've done anything bass related on this channel. Uh, well, for one, I've changed the changed the white pickguard to a black one. I kept the chrome covers, also changed the pickups, both to Seymour Duncan quarter pounders, which really improves the tone of both of them, and the tuners as well, and the bridge as well. Uh, and they all came from this bass over here, which Andrew has himself uh, modded. Yeah. Uh, what what did you do with this? You changed the pickguard. Uh, I've done a lot to it. It was originally it was a stock uh, Roger Waters Precision bass, and uh, basically how it came out from the factory was all the body was all black on black, including the hardware, the maple neck, and then it had open stamped uh, late uh, mid to late seventies uh, tuners, and then um, mm. basically what it did with it was got rid of the pickguard twice. This is the second iteration, and I, I think this is the winner. The tortoise shell. Mm -hmm. uh, the Seymour Duncan pickups I gave to hit your base. I didn't really like them at all. Yeah, well, that, 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 that was just the uh, the split coil. Yeah, the split pickup. coil. Yeah, I didn't like how they scooped the mids out, but they were, you know, they were really good for low end and high end. So, but I wanted a more classic sound, so I put a '62 Fender Spec pickups in it. Also put a chrome bridge, chrome screws, chrome knobs, uh, some chrome parts for the jack, and uh, the I got um the late '60s, early '70s mm -hmm. um wound tuners with a little bit longer stems. You see them a lot. Th these particular ones are the Gotos. You see them a lot on the Japanese Fender bases, like yeah. the Jaguar and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But um, other than that, uh, you know, the electronic layout is still original. The tone circuit's still original. But um, I, she's definitely a better player than when it was when she was uh, stock, and uh, I'm definitely proud of it. Yeah. So so essentially, everything that was basically the parts that he took off of this base ended up on this base, except the the, the, the bridge pickup I got on my own because that didn't have one. Uh -huh. So I, my first base that I ever learned to play on was my dad's 62 J's, which I gotta have that bridge tone. So we'll start with that since that's the that's probably the best improvement of this whole thing is just the bridge pickup. So it almost gives you that fretless kind of tone. <laughs> Same thing I just played last, and we'll we'll go from there. Also, mine has uh, uh, Diodario half rounds. Your has Rotosomes. Uh, yes, they are the RN sixty swing sixty sixes. These are nickel plated, not, mm -hmm. not um, the steels. And the way you can tell is um, they don't have the cloth lines at the end of the strings. Yeah. Which I didn't know, but that's uh, that's surprising. Yeah. So yeah. It's kind of so like Diodarios, but they, so, I, they yeah. feel better. So I th I think the combination of the half rounds and the Seymour Duncan quarter pounder gives my bass a little more like just low end, low end in general. Whereas this will probably be more trebly. It'll be more mids if if anything. Yeah. 
say like a Nord Strand or a Lindsay Fraland, you can pick a setup of the 62 spec up pickups from, I'm thinking around $75, maybe more less, depending on where you shop. Yeah, so well, how, well, how much would a Duncan Quarter Pounder be? Like, just uh, the maybe $10 more, around the same. Another good budget pickup if you want some with a little bit more low-end yeah. definition. Yeah, so until... I mean, part of the reason why I bought this is because it was it had the PJ set up, but it was only 140 bucks. So which, 140 bucks in what, 2007 is like a lot of money now. <laughs> So this is uh, both pickups now. I mean, I, I've got one of the stock ones, one of the big, one of the just normal big muffs, and this is, it's it sounds it sounds exactly the same, just bassier. So, I mean, I've I've used I've used these on guitar as well, and they sound just as good. So. It's only a 
at certain angles. Yes. If, if you're really into noise rock, this is something you'd want to do. I mean, if you don't mind sacrificing a little bit of uh, where you play on the bass. I mean, I typically... Let me turn this off for one second. I don't want to struggle with feedback while I'm talking. But, uh, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm such a Jamerson freak that I, you know, I wanted to have this particular one here because I like to play with one finger occasionally. ever since putting this pickup on there that actually when it comes to playing just bridge pickup it's actually better to play here <laughs> i was never a fan of playing by the bridge so i don't mind losing that or playing over those neck pickups supposed to do is it, is it a distortion or like a bit crusher or something yeah. it just doesn't but it, it doesn't whatever it does it doesn't sound good but every almost every other pedal in that series even the even the weeping demon wa, uh, weeping demon wa uh they're all really good i've got the flanger chorus the cf7 i've got the the fuzz the fc7 and the well yeah the the synthesizer bass and there's another one i have don't i i forget are the knobs on those like pushed and then they, they are so up? you get so you could just you know Put your setting in and push it in so it doesn't get moved around. Yeah, and I always, I always on. wondered. Well, that clarifies it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, but I, I, I've tried the delay before. I, I haven't tried the phaser. I hear the phaser is really good too. But um, I've been looking into the new DLD reissues. Those look pretty killer. Mm. So, all right, let me uh, keep going down the pedal board a little more. We'll go to the small corner. So. or module or some sort of uh, like the EMS Synthy High Fly I think is actually like the precursor of the small stone right because it's made by the same guy who I know MXR wasn't around at that time yet You know the you know the squeal that was made by reversing the the plugs on the wah pedal and like the far fees are doing a lot of weird stuff. 
you see this in the live of Pompeii movie. Roger Waters actually takes like a screwdriver or something to the to his bass and just does this. Or just wind sound effects. settings again with the other bass just to once again a b the tones and scene okay all right so so we'll do the same thing with the carbon copy and here the modulation is so slight Right, 
Try that with the big hawk. That might that might blow a few things up. You might want to put it on normal instead of bass too. Yeah, yeah. Cut that. Actually, no, that was on dry. Oh yeah, so bring Actually, up the tone a little bit. Too. Yeah, yeah. Now it's on bass too. Sounds like Lemmy. 
it, does this work the same way like a distortion pedal where you just turn the volume down? That's how close the two plants are to each other. So, you know, I, I you know, I mean, I've, I've also, I've got a Mexican telly. I've also got a Mexican, um, what, what else? Oh, yeah, uh, the, actually, no, the, the, the fretless is a Squire, but I think that's like a Chinese or Indonesian. Yeah. But that one's really good, too. It's, that's what I said earlier about, like, the new, like, up in quality of, like, the Vintage Vibe series and stuff like that is that they really, I guess, I guess the, they really cracked the whip on the Asian plants. Oh, you know what? Uh, the, the neck on my Stratocaster, like, I replaced that with the... Uh, with a, with a Chinese neck, and mm -hmm. has a much better neck than the one it came with. Right. So this is, you know, that's kind of why I more prefer the tone of this bass over the other one, really. It's just because I, I prefer the more rounded out bass tone and more... More fundamental. Yeah. I mean, I like, I like, ha like adding the, I like adding the tune from the, from the bridge pickup as well. Because sometimes you do need it, you do need some extra, a little bit of higher harmonics in there. But I will say that I will say the bridge pickup on its own is very fundamental on its own as well. Yeah, like the more I play this bass, the more I realize that you know if I'm ever dealing with this pickup, I should always play it down here, even with Volker on. <laughs> Essentially, parts Fender bases just assembled together from what both me and Andrew prefer, but they're both great in the sense that you know they like you could do so many different things with the, with a P bass that you know you can make it your own. It doesn't have to be just a P bass. It's very modular. For anybody getting into Fender Squire, one thing you must always remember: you can you always can, make it better. Yeah, you can always make it better, and you can always make it play the way you want it to play. Yeah. Just a matter of switching out a couple of pieces here and there, and you'll have your own individual bass in no time. Mm hmm All so. right. That's it from us. Uh, have a good one.